Dr. Hao, Wu Jin Tian Tai, Guo Ji, Un Dong Guan, and I'm gonna share with you guys five different mistakes that you are probably making and that are stopping you from making gains right here on your biceps. So let's get straight into it. All right, guys, let's start with mistake number one, and that is the use of too much momentum. It is very common to see people using a lot of momentum when doing curls of any kind, moving back and forth with the only purpose of bringing the dumbbell up at any cost without realizing that what they're actually doing is putting a lot of pressure on the lower back. So apart from being extremely dangerous, it's also very ineffective for bicep development. So having said that, what you actually want to do here is keep yourself stable by tightening up your abdominal area and all of the core muscles and really focus on the bicep shortening and lengthening contraction. I think many people make this mistake essentially because they choose weights they cannot handle, heavy weights that they can actually lift. So that leads them with no other option than start swinging. Stop being so proud, drop the weights and drop the ego. Choose a decent weight that challenges you but also allows you to keep a decent technique and most importantly, safe from injury. All right guys, let's move on to mistake number two and that is starting a second rep without even waiting to finish the first one. I have seen a lot of people doing this. They start raising one dumbbell up, then they bring it down halfway and they start raising the opposite dumbbell up without even waiting for the first rep to be completed. This is a big mistake because what you're basically doing here is using the momentum of one side to help lift the other. This in turn decreases the work done by the biceps, leaving you with less bicep activation and less muscle gains. To fix this, you must finish a complete rep on one side, first by lifting the dumbbell all the way up and then lowering it all the way down. Once you have reached the bottom, only then you should commence lifting the second dumbbell on the opposite side. Mistake number three, that is overloading front delt and traps. Now, this mistake has to do with the positioning and movement of your shoulders and also with the use of your upper back muscles, specifically the traps. Some people tend to bring the elbows forward so much that they end up activating the front delt excessively. So instead of doing a bicep curl, now they are performing something very close to a front shoulder elevation. This of course, as you might suppose, will shift away a lot of the work to the front delts from the biceps, decreasing the effectiveness of the exercise. So to avoid this from happening, try keeping your elbows low and in place by your sides. A little movement forward is acceptable, but more than that will just make the exercise a lot less effective. Now, in regards to the use of your traps, which is this muscle group here on your upper back, it happens when people start lifting their shoulders up as they are curling the weights. This is a mistake that I personally have struggled with for a long time in the past and has taken me a long time and a lot of work to correct, especially when going for heavy reps. To fix this, we must limit the action of the traps by keeping our shoulders down at all times. Most times, it is hard to realize we are making this mistake, which is why full concentration on every rep is absolutely necessary. Let's move on to mistake number four, guys. That is not dividing work for the short and the long head of the bicep. This mistake is commonly done by many gym goers because of the lack of understanding of biceps anatomy. Our bicep is divided into two heads, the long head on the outer part and the short head in the inner part of the upper arm. To target each of them more effectively, you cannot stick to that same middle grip width all the time. Instead, go for narrow grips for more long head activation and wider grips for short head activation. A good way to remember this concept is by going by Jeff Cavalier's words, who mentions that the part of the arm that you can see is the part you are focusing on. Meaning that if I have my hands pointing outwards, the most visible part is the short head. In the opposite way, if my hands are pointing inwards, the head that we get to see the most is the long head. So let's stop using middle grips for every bicep exercise because that will only limit growth in the long term. All right guys, mistake number five, and this is the last mistake for today's video. Only focusing on the concentric part of the exercise and completely forgetting about the eccentric part. Honestly, I could not stress on this point any harder. 
it is crucial guys that you put as much effort when curling the weights up as when you lower the weights down. Very often I see people doing their best to lift the dumbbell or barbell up but then they forget completely to offer resistance to the lowering of the weight. The lowering of the weight in this case is what is called the eccentric phase of the rep and which according to some studies might produce more force and recruitment of muscle fibers type 2 which is what biceps are mainly composed of. So putting extra effort and resistance to weights as you lower them down will definitely add extra size to your guns. So that was it for today guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video and you found it useful. And if you did, why don't you give me your thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks so much again. Cheers, bye.